Hello everybody, um, welcome to Dandelion Lessons. Um, today, I, well this morning, I had this quote in my mind um, that has to do, I think it originated, I, I don't even know who said it originally, but um, I think it has to do with the gospel story of the loaves and the fishes in, in some strange way. But the quote was, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. And so I, I'd like to call this standalone lessons loaves and fishes. <laughs> because it, 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 the idea sort of encompasses a few different aspects of dandelion lessons to me. And one of those is... Um, one of those is about the, the vocation of having a creative practice in your life that brings twofold joy. So it brings you joy, as I've said before, by the simple act of creating it, but it brings others joy because you send it out into the world. And so, so the effect of it has the potential to really ripple out into the world. But the other part of that is that when I teach, when I teach a practice um, to someone else, I have, I have a true, um, I have a true desire for that person to teach it to someone else. So if I teach something to someone, my hope is that they'll teach it to someone else, that they'll pass on um, the gift of whatever it is that they learned. And I, and I, I like to do that f um, when someone teaches me something. I like to pass that on as well. And so it, it's, a really, um, it's, it's an important part of all of this to me. Because I believe that that creativity and the creative, that the spirit of creativity and the spirit of making and having a creative practice is to share it, not to hoard it for ourselves. And that goes a little bit further in that I think that when we make something like a dandelion lesson with the intentions of dandelion lessons, so to bring twofold joy and to share joy into the world and, and to share what we know with other people, um, it, it removes the element of, um, for, for this specific piece of, of work that I'm creating, removes the element from this of, of selling it to someone to earn, to earn money. So I can create work to sell and it just has a different intention. So it, it would not be a dandelion lesson. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I, you know, I see, <clears throat> and, and I have no way of knowing, you know, if I teach someone something, um, their intentions are their own and they may intend to take that um, gift and create something, a physical thing that they can send out or they might decide to sell it and I have no control over that but what I hope is that dandelion lessons in themselves can remain pure that way and can remain something that is meant to be to be freely given so it, it, the techniques and and um, putting paint on paper certainly you know can be used in many many ways but it's it's I guess it, it all goes back to our intentions right it goes back it goes back to to what our intentions are for the work that we're doing in the moment. So I certainly have work that I do um, that is intended to be sold, and and that's how I how I started, and that was what led me to the gift of teaching, and and with teaching I earn income as well, 
And so, um, so this thing, the YouTube videos, are my way of, of giving it out into the world without a return to me in a financial way. The return to me is in joy <laughs> and, in, and, and the excitement that I see in other people when they begin to learn and, and when they just make the decision to bring a creative practice into their life. And that, that is my return, okay? And at the same time, I get tremendous joy just from creating this and just from sitting here and talking to you and painting. So it, it, there's a lot of return um, when, we, when we offer something um, without the intention of being paid for it. And so I think that's just an important thing to remember. But it also brings me to another part of this and, um, and a part of creative practice and a part of the art world and a part of um, being someone who creates and, and might share it with others. It, it brings me to that as well because there is a tendency um, when we start, that I've noticed, when, when we start to create and make something beautiful and share it and become a professional at it, there, there's this tendency to hoard our knowledge. Um, I've seen it many, many times. And I, I guess I just don't see the benefit of that. I, I don't see what the return is on that. And, you know, we, as people, we have to, to give and receive. That's a big part of being human, that, that we give, but that we also learn how to receive. And I think part of that is important when, when we receive and give without monetary attachment, you know. And, and also, when we are given and we, we learn a skill and, and we, we begin to be able to paint a beautiful bird, for instance, and we can sell that bird and be paid for it and know that someone else is appreciating it and having it in their home and what a meaningful thing. You know, I, I think it's a wonderful thing and there's nothing wrong with that and I, I do it all the time. But if someone asks me, how did you paint that bird? I'm not gonna keep it a secret, <laughs> you know? I want to share my process. It's just something I believe and so strongly, I want to share it. And, and that is why I teach. It's a big reason why I teach, you know, because I believe that that information should be shared. I don't think we should hoard it, all right? And so if, if in the past, if I've asked um, an artist, you know, wow, wow I really love um, what you've created here and the, and the texture of that paper is so beautiful. And then I ask, you know, what is the paper that you're using there? And there's crickets, <laughs> you know, they never respond. Or, you know, how do you, how do you get such smooth edges on the edges of your flowers, you know, and crickets, there's no response. Um, I don't understand that. And, and I think it comes from a place of, of fear that, there won't be enough for everyone. You know, that, that if I give away, you know, my secrets, which I don't believe they're secrets, I believe we've all learned from what's come before us. Um, but if we give away our secrets, if we give away how we create what we create, then someone else will take over and there won't be enough for me. And see, I just don't come from a place where I believe that there won't be enough if we all share. I believe that there's enough pie for everyone, <laughs> that that when we're given a loaf of bread, you know, we only need some of it, and then when we give it away, we get it back in so many different ways, right? And so I, I come from a place that where I, I don't believe that by giving, there won't be enough for us. I just, I, I believe when we give that we receive, and so, I, I just have never, I've just never really understood that mentality. And I understand, I, I understand it in a way. I mean, I understand that, you know, the fear of not having enough. I, I do understand that. But I don't, I don't believe it's true. 
I believe that when, when we give, we receive. And, and I believe in freely sharing the gifts I've been given. And, and to teach someone else what I know and what I'm learning so that they can learn and then they can teach another person. And then all of a sudden, that will ripple out and we'll have this tremendously wonderful world to live in because we have a culture of giving and sharing and receiving. And, you know, maybe I'm a little Pollyanna that way, and I probably am. You know, I probably am. I pro there are parts of me that, that know that I'm an idealist and um, the glass is always full and, you know, that kind of thing. But but I've, I've experienced it, you know. I, I've had the experience of it in my life. It's not that it's just a theory. I've seen it in action and I've seen it work, you know. And so... So I feel like my theory and my belief has been tested and has been proven to me over and over again. I, I have no doubt about that. So I guess, you know, the, the loaves and the fishes for me is, is really about sharing and it's about knowing that there will always be enough for everyone if we can, if, if we have that, that culture of giving and of sharing freely. And, and sometimes we're paid and sometimes in, in a financial way and sometimes we're paid in other ways. And truly, the financial way is it, it's very, it's vitally important. I mean, we can't pay our bills. We can't put food on our table. We can't go to the doctor. We can't, you know, get the things that we need to even create um, if we don't have money coming in somehow. But it's not where it ends, okay? And, and... In my mind, the, the the richer part of that, the richer part of that is is how we receive in other ways, and, and I've just seen it. I've seen it happen over and over again. So, so how do you then? Um, just I need a little sunshine on here, a little mimosa. <laughs> um, So, yeah, it, it's a tricky subject, you know. I, I, I just, but, but I see it in some ways when I'm, you know, visiting social media, and I, and I see a, sometimes a very heavy, a very heavy culture on on financial, on the financial aspects of this, and not as much on on the the freely sharing. And, and I, I'm seeing more of the freely sharing, and, I, and it just lights me up <laughs> when I see it. Um, but I think we, it's just good to be aware of it. That so, so we can create and, and receive financial gain and all of that, but there has to be that element of, of dandelion lessons. Dandelion lessons are, are freely given of spirit and the joy of creativity and of creative practice. They're freely given. And... And there is no, um, it would be wrong in my heart to take this right here and to try to sell it. Um, not even that anybody would want to buy it, but I'm just saying the intention should, should never be in my mind to, to sell it. It is, it is created in the, in the spirit of giving freely. So I, I just, I hope that makes sense. And I hope, I really, I hope it makes sense. And I hope that you all, you know, if, if you decide to, to bring this, the dandelion lesson practice into your life, the many, many elements of it, that you'll, you'll embody that spirit. And that when, you know, when you start to feel comfortable with your own practice, that, that you have it in your heart to share it with others. And, I, I've seen it happen so many times. Um, I, I know people, even here in where I live, that have taken dandelion lessons and 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 already have been gathering with other people that that might really need a creative practice in their life, and they're sharing it and they send me pictures. And it is, it's exactly why I do this. You know, it's exactly why I do this. So, you know. I don't know. I, I hope it makes sense. And I, it's a tricky thing to talk about, but I feel it's important. 
um, and I wouldn't talk about it if I didn't feel if I didn't feel that importance of it. Um, and, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it too. I mean, this this part of dandelion lessons is truly, truly, truly what matters. You know, there are other things that I teach that are not dandelion lessons. No, they're not. But if if you're doing something in the spirit of dandelion lessons, I just hope, I hope this makes sense. And I hope that you'll take it to heart too. I really hope so. So that's it. I just made a dandelion lesson and a wrapping paper and I can let these dry and then finish them up. And I have someone, someone in mind um, to send it to. And I noticed that I put my brush back and my brown ink with when it still had red ink on it. <laughs> I should pay better attention. Um, hopefully it didn't sully it too much. But anyways, um, yeah, I hope this makes sense. I hope it wasn't just a ramble for nothing. <laughs> but, um, it, but it's complicated, you know, and, and it's really complicated for me. And yet it's so simple. I just, I just want there to be an element of creative practice for everyone in the world, for their own personal creative practice that they can... They can spend time with no other intentions or ex expectations but to bring joy to themselves and then to, to share it with someone else. And I think that's a vital thing that's really missing in our world today. And, and that's why I do it. So anyways, thank you so much for being here and for listening to me ramble. <laughs> and um, I hope you're having a beautiful day. It's really cold and rainy here, but it has its own kind of... Of beauty and I'm going to enjoy it and get to my work. All right, thank you very much. Goodbye.